When we celebrated reaching 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube, we did a huge giveaway contest. And one of the prizes was this light meter here from Sekonic. Now, I honestly have very little experience with a light meter. And that's why I invited someone who thought me more about this light meter. And I'll be taking it to the field to test out how this Sekonic light meter will help me. Hey folks, it's Jordi here for Cinecam.net and this right here is the L858D Speedmaster. Probably one of the better light meters you can get at this time. It's packed with tons of features that work from DSLRs to cinema cameras. It works for both ambient and flash lighting, so filmmakers and photographers can use it. It has a spot and incident meter, which are both very sensitive. It can handle the brightest sunlight to a single candle in a cave. And we'll get to that in just a little moment. But what's important though is to figure out how this works and how it will benefit my workflow as a filmmaker. Honestly, I don't have that much experience with a light meter. That's one of the reasons I love to work on this project. I want to learn how to use it and see how it helps my work. Luckily, I was able to talk with Matt from Cinematography Database, who has worked on tons of high-end productions and gave me some great insights about the light meter. Jordi, thanks so much for having me on your channel. I really appreciate that. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Workman of Cinematography Database. I have my own YouTube channel and Instagram channel. Would love if you join me there as well. And today we're going to be talking about light meters, right? So when I first started, this was about 10 years ago, we were still shooting on film, Super 16 and 35 millimeter actual film like celluloid. And back then, if you didn't have one of these, a light meter, you couldn't shoot film, you couldn't expose, you couldn't do anything. So for me, the first thing I bought right out of film school was a light meter. It wasn't this exact one, this is the new one. I had the L758 Cine. This is their updated one. This is the one that I recommend now and I'm sure Jordi does as well. But back then to be a DP, to shoot film, and even the beginning days of digital, you didn't quite trust what was going on. We didn't really have the waveforms and all that stuff super figured out. It was still kind of a, the wild, wild west. You used the light meter to do your exposure. Now these days, of course, exposure is not necessarily being done with light meters. You can use false color, you can use waveforms, vector scopes, that's on exposure. You can just look at the monitor and you can tell what looks good. And the time that light meters really come in handy are in two cases, and I think Jordi's gonna talk about this as well. One is on location scout. So what you can do is you can go to a mode that's called absolute uh, exposure, or absolute light reading basically, and you can use the light meter and you can go into a location without a camera, without anything, and record how much light is in that room coming through the window from available light, something like that at that time. So in the States, we're gonna use foot candles, and in the EU and basically everywhere else in the world, you guys are gonna use lux. And what you can do is you can go to a location and be like, you know what, this window at this time of day, we're getting about 50 foot candles. That would be a lot, you know, something like that. You can then go under like, okay, so there's a bunch of street lamps at night, we're gonna get five foot candles from that. And you can write that down in your notes. And when you go back to pick a camera and choose what stop you can, you're gonna be at, you can use those ratings of foot candles or lux and you can figure out with the meter or on a computer or some program, what stop you'd be at at a certain ISO and a certain shutter speed. So what never changes is the amount of light coming through the window, or that reading essentially. So this time of day, we've got 10 foot candles. That will eventually equate to a certain f-stop at a certain ISO and shutter. So you can bring the meter on your scouts and you can use it to record a bunch of different light levels and just have that as an absolute reading and measurement of light. That is something that still cameras and video cameras still cannot do very well, and that's one really good use of a light meter. All right, Matt, I'm standing here inside my living room, and the idea is to create this very simple light setup where we have like a very low sunlight, because Jenik has been working on some paper stuff the entire night. He's kind of cracking this case, and he found the solution so we can go to bed now and sleep. Anyways, the camera is going to stand right over there. And I want to start with kind of measuring the global lighting that we have here. Because you can see we have kind of, we have some windows here. We also have this lamp here on top, which we're also going, going to use. So uh, I want to see like, what is the light currently in this room? So we have like a starting point and then we can set up the lighting. So we're going to use the incident lighting here on top and there are a couple of settings on how we can measure the lighting through this menu right here. Now on the right side, we can find all kinds of flash meterings. Now I'm not a photographer, so I can't tell much about that. So we're going to take a look here on the left side, which is the ambient uh, light meter settings. So for the first measuring mode, we're going to, for example, pick here the one on top. So here we can set the shutter speed, the ISO, and that will give us an output of the correct aperture that we have to set. So let's just do that quickly. 
Let's measure the light that we have here. So with these settings here on top, we have to set the aperture to 1.4. Now let's go back into the menu because there are a couple of more settings here. We can also go for something like setting the aperture, the ISO, and that will give us the output of which shutter speed that we have to set. But there are two very cool modes in here, and that is the HD and Cine mode. Now, these are specific for, the HD is for DSLR type cameras. So this is really something for me. I'm working with the GH5. And what we can do here is set, again, the shutter speed, the ISO, but also the frame rate. And the shutter speed will kind of work accordingly towards that frame rate. Also pretty cool about this light meter is its sensitivity. Now, let's say in the future there are cameras that have like a 2 million or 4 million ISO. Well, this light meter is so sensitive that we can set that. So here you can see here on top with the ISO, I can really pinch this to a ridiculous high number. But this is pretty cool because that means that I can use this light meter for any kinds of camera today or in the future. So let's measure the light here, guys. I'm going to start with the front side of Janik's face. So that's going to be the fill light. And uh, we're getting an aperture here of 2.0. Now in the back, I want to kind of want to see what's the difference in lighting here so that I know at how much uh, of that sunlight that we can bring in. And for that, I'm going to press here on this little button down below. And this will give me an output of the difference between these two light sources. So if I'm going to measure here, I know exactly how much stops extra this uh, window here on the back is. So I'm currently at around 1.7 stops of a difference. So it's 1.7 stops brighter here than on the front. So that means we can play a little bit with the low sun here because we definitely want to have that brighter as the background. I set the light meter to lux mode, measuring mode, and that will give us like a raw output of the intensity of the light. Matt also talked a bit about that. Anyways, you'll be surprised at how much uh, the light will decrease in intensity by its distance. For example, I'm measuring here a raw output of 44,000 lux. And let me just go like a little bit further and that will give us now an output of 4,500. So that's almost 10 times less light than I'm getting, which is such a small distance here. We're getting a value here right now of 7.0 for the aperture. So we're getting a bunch of light from there, a little bit too much, but we are going to have to place as well a CTB filter in front of that because we're kind of mixing here daylight with tungsten lighting. Now what would often happen is during a production, we would set like a filter in front of the light and then afterwards we notice like, hey, this light has been decreased too much in intensity. So we have to switch the light for something stronger and then put the filters again on it. So it's a big hassle here. So here's where the light meter really comes into handy because I can go into the menu here, head over to the filter compensation and select the CDB filter here from all the bunch of presets that we have. By the way, you can also create your own filters in here if you like so. And I'm going to select the CDB filter. It's the blue filter and I'm going to get a CDB full filter and that will change the aperture now. You can see it to f4.0. So without physically having to change the filter, I instantly know what the output is going to be. So we're getting something pretty nice here. We've got an f4 here on the front and let me just compare that to the back now, and we're getting now a difference of 1.3 of an f-stop. So that is perfect, this is exactly what we wanted to have. Let's put that filter in front of the light. So Jordi and I were talking before this video and we were kind of saying it's hard to recommend buying a light meter as the first thing that you're gonna get as a cinematographer these days. This is about 600, I think, the color one's like 1200 or 1400. It's pretty expensive and you can buy a camera for that same price. And what I would say is that when you're exposing for available light or exteriors or places where you're not gonna really affect the lighting that much, a light meter doesn't necessarily make very much sense in today's ecosystem. When a light meter starts to make sense is when you start to actually light your sets and really start to affect the lighting and you start to work with teams, okay? So when you first start and you have your own light kit, you might have one person helping you, but it's basically you and you're gonna make all the decisions and you're looking at the monitor and that's all that really matters. So you use false color, the waveforms, and you're your own boss, you're making your own decisions. You might be working with one director, but you're kind of doing everything. What happens is that you eventually start working with a team and that's where the meter starts to really come in handy. Eventually, the lead person doing your lighting is called the gaffer. And the gaffer is gonna order the lights, the gaffer is gonna himself or herself, and their team gonna set up all the lights for you and you're just gonna be communicating what you want to them. So you're not the one anymore hanging the lights, changing the focus, uh, panning them around, changing the light levels. You'll be at the camera or the monitor and you'll be directing them for what you want them to do. In that case, what becomes much faster than looking at the monitor and turning things off and on, although you have to go through that process, one more tool 
that's gonna help you a lot is the light meter. So say you have four lights in four different rooms and you have a shot that goes in between all the rooms. Now, say you want them to all be the same light level, more or less, you don't wanna to have to open up the iris or stop down mid shot and you wanna walk through all the rooms. Obviously, you can just take your camera and do the same thing, but say you don't have the camera, you're doing what's called the pre-light, which is lighting the day before, and a lot of the times you don't have the camera, what you can do is use this light meter to balance the four rooms so they're all the same. Likewise, when you're moving really quickly and you are with the director, you're figuring out the block and you're doing the high level cinematographer stuff, you're gonna need to be able to delegate to your lighting team what's going on and so you can just show up and it looks pretty close to ready before you even get there. That's something you have to be able to learn how to do as a cinematographer if you're going to be lighting for bigger projects. The light meter is one way of communicating with your lighting team in a common language. You can communicate in foot candles, in lux, or you can just both set your meters to the same ISO and shutter and be like, I want through the windows to be about a five, six, but when we make it over to this wall, let's bring it down a stop to four. I wanna make sure to backlight at an eight so we have a big backlight that's really bright for the whole thing. It's a common language. It's not a secret language. You do have to learn it, but once you learn that, you can walk on set almost anywhere in the world, and this is a universal way of communicating about light. This is more important, again, like I said, when you have lots of lights and you are actually lighting everything that's there. If you're outside, you don't really need it as much, though I think it's pretty helpful. When you get to that level, you're working with teams, bigger sets, you're using lots of lights, a light meter actually becomes mandatory, in my opinion. I use it on a lot of the lights where I'm lighting, pre-lighting specifically to have a big lighting team. It's something I always have with me, usually to set the first stop, and especially if we're doing multiple locations at once and lighting them all up, and you need that common language to speak about lighting, that is the light meter. Matt, thank you so much for your insights. Me, as a light meter beginner, I loved to work with it, even on smaller projects. Like recently, we did a shoot in a bakery, and while the cameraman was busy with setting up his stuff, I could just light out a white screen we had on the background. By the time he was done setting up the crane and the dolly, I had my lighting set up. And it also made me think a lot more about the different stops. It felt like the first time I bought my DSLR camera, and I had to set the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed myself. It made me realized I'm changing the depth of field and motion blur. Same with the light meter. It's not only about having detail in your shadows and highlights, it's also about the difference in stops you example have between the key and the backlight. Are you going for a hard contrast or softer? It sets a different mood, which you like to keep throughout the entire production. Now, in a couple of days, we have to go back to the bakery for some more shots, and I'm really looking forward to using that light meter again. For more information about the Sekonic Speedmaster, just follow the first link in the description below. And make sure to check out Matt's YouTube channel as well at Cinematography Database, also a link in the description below. I've learned so much from you, Matt, so thank you so much for sharing all your great experience to the community. And thank you guys for watching, and never forget, stay creative.